up, arise. It's a gorgeous day. Oh, what a nice day to praise the Lord. Sing with us. We're all trading our sorrows for a better life. Amen. hope everyone is having a beautiful day on this sunny, warm day. I just came back from South Dakota where it's 21 below zero, so uh, this is like a heat wave. So will you join me with the lit for the litany, which will appear somewhere? Oh come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things has done. The 
O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. O come, let us worship the Lord, for God has done wondrous things. Would you all join me, please, in saying the statement of faith, which will appear up on our screen. We believe that we can treat one another as the fullest expression of how we live out our faith. We find our approach to God through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is our model for living. And we recognize the faithfulness of the sex, which may also lead us to the experience of God. We stand in our faith, and we believe our faith in our attitudes and our actions towards one another. And we understand the church as a union of people, together in you know, the body of Christ. We desire to live the physical, spiritual, and spiritual union of others. We are inclusive as Christ was, and welcome all people seeking a closer relationship with God. We believe that the inventions are as important as the answers, and that leaving the mystery is a more sacred position than church, tradition, and doctrine. We desire to judge them, serve all in Jesus' name as we proclaim our mystery of faith, that Christ died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. The congregation may be seated, and I invite all of the children to come up for a children's message. All right, here they come. Hey, oh, wow! Okay. Hey, that was really 
good. Um, just a reminder, uh, there are people who uh, are on their computers and they're watching this service, but they can't see us up here, okay? Because we want to be careful about not showing the faces of children to the whole world, okay? So we're, so we're really careful about that here. So hello, you live streamers. You can, you can hear us but not see us. All right. So how has this week been? Good? Great. Great. What was great? That t today I'm having horseback riding lessons. It's my Me first too. time. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so cool. I hope it goes really well. My dad rode a donkey. <laughs> that, not everyone can say that. I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. I, I've, I've had not so good experiences riding horses. One time I, I fell off the horse. That's, you just don't give up. Right, right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Good. It yes. Well, well, I would have gotten back on, but I couldn't sit. The horse that the horse that we're riding, it already got an award. Well, that is so cool. Last Can, time I saw the farm, I was like feeding them. There was a dog there for no reason. Do dogs are. Anyone else have a good story from this week? No. That's that's the best. Okay. Good. <laughs> Well, I'm going to teach you something, and it involves, um, it involves uh, hand and arm movement. So everyone make sure that your hands and arms are ready to go. Ready to go, okay? Good. So we're going to start out, and God. 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 Okay, good? God. So we point up for God. 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 Is gracious. Is gracious. So, so, we'll, so take one hand and we'll pat the other hand. Is gracious and merciful. So then we take the, that hand and pet the other hand. Okay. Like a dog. Like like a dog. And two of them. Or or a little baby. Yeah, or two of them. So God is gracious and merciful. You can say it at the same time. God, God is gracious and merciful. And then we're just going to start with our hands together. Slow. <laughs> okay. So let's try that. Slow. To anger. To anger. To anger. To anger. So does anyone ever point at you when they're angry at you? Have you ever had that? No? I've had that. What happened? Uh, to make them angry. I used my words, and they weren't necessarily nice words. What words? <laughs> Stupid or poop? Oh no, I did not use those words. No. No, I I just pointed out ways in which they were wrong. So. What words? What kind? I said. Well, let's just let that one go by. Okay. All right. This Good. is whoever you are. That's that's right. Okay, so <laughs> slow to anger. To anger. Good. So let's try that whole thing again. God is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger. And abounding. We're going to be getting into other people's faces. And abounding, oh yes, in steadfast, in steadfast. Love. love. Or you could do love like this. Which way should we do love? The heart? The heart? The heart? Okay. I make fashions. <laughs> okay. So God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast, so for steadfast, we're just going to make a real steady, steadfast 
love. Okay, really good. You want to see if they can do it? Yes. Okay, all right. You've been watching, you haven't been doing it. All right. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Okay, great. Now you know a verse of the Bible. In fact, it comes up many times in the Bible. So how about that? All right, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for all of your gifts, especially for the way you treat us when we don't deserve it. Amen. All right, why don't you head to Sunday school now? Thanks for coming up. Yes, the old, old story. The uh, first of the scriptures that I'm going to share with you today, um, I have to tell you I'm used to preaching from three or four scriptures 
a Sunday, um, and I haven't been able to get it down to one, but I have gotten it down to two. So, um, so, so, so I'm adjusting. Uh, the first scripture is uh, from Nehemiah, and this was from a time right after uh, the people had returned from exile. Now, they were in exile for three generations at least. And uh, what the Babylonians did was they overran Israel. They destroyed the temple, which was where all the worship took place. And then they took all the leaders of the people. They took the priests. They took the scribes. They took the political leaders. Basically, everyone who was literate, they took with them in Babylon. And those people tried to pass down their faith, their Jewish faith, um, to their children and grandchildren, but it was really hard to do it there. Meanwhile, the people who were still in Israel, who weren't carted off in exile, they couldn't read whatever scrolls of their scriptures were left, right? Because all of the people who could read were gone. So the words of God, the scriptures, were lost for at least three generations of those who had left and then returned and the people who had stayed there. So, and this is, this reading is about the day that they finally again hear the words of their scriptures. When the seventh month came, the people of Israel being settled in their towns. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. Ezra read it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the women and the men and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the Lord. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their face to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that people could understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the word of the Lord. Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, and it is one of the traditional Gospels that is read during the season of Epiphany, because Epiphany is about the revealing of who Jesus is to the world. And in this gospel, Jesus reveals another facet of who he is and what he has come to do. From the, 14th chap from the fourth chapter of Luke's gospel. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues 
and was praised by everyone. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your presence. The word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. And uh, this side, if you could look toward the open windows, and this side, if you could look toward the stained glass windows. Very good. Okay, you may sit down. What we have done here is we have demonstrated the power of the word. Right? I spoke a word and you all did it. So, so thank you for that. So today we are talking about hearing good news and how powerful the words of good news are. I think of our federal workers who got some good news late on Friday, that they could go back to work, that they could receive their checks again. They probably won't be receiving their paychecks until Thursday of this week, but they will be receiving them, and it may be only for three weeks, but they will be receiving paychecks. What relief, what good news that must be. And we all wish it were for longer than three weeks, right? I received good news. I've received lots of good news over my life. There was one time when I received good news and I started crying at it. Actually, I was crying before I received the news. This was early in my relationship with Don, before we got married. And I was thinking over things that I had done in past relationships and feeling really bad about it. Um, not the kinds of things that people would get angry with me about. But, um, but I was still feeling bad about these things. And I was sighing, and I was crying, and I was emotionally distressed. And Don said to me, I forgive you. Now, it was not up to him to forgive me. I hadn't hurt him. I'd more hurt myself, but I needed to hear those words. I forgive you. I needed to hear them. And he sensed that I needed to hear them. And he spoke them to me. And I'd been crying from sadness, but my crying changed to joy and relief after he said, I forgive you. The people of Israel, they had been through a lot. Their country had done 
just miserably after the invasion by Babylon, all those generations of exile. Finally, the exiles were allowed to come back, and they were starting to be a nation again, to be a community. And then the priests who returned, the few who could still read, they found those old scrolls that someone had hidden away. Someone knew those scrolls were important, and so they hid them away in safety, even though they couldn't read them. The ones who hid them, they knew they were important. And so when the priests came back, they, they gave the scrolls to them. And Ezra, in reading them over, said, the people need to know this. They need to know what the word of God is. And so they all gathered together that day. It took Ezra hours to read those scriptures the law of Moses. Now, the laws that Moses wrote in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and in Genesis 2, those laws also were stories and God's promises, but they also set forth God's expectations This is how I want you to relate to each other. This is how I want you to relate to strangers. This is how I want you to relate to me. They had lost all of that knowledge over those three generations. And on this one day, the first day of the seventh month, they heard for the first time what it was that God had in mind for them, for this people. And they realized that they had not been keeping those laws. They hadn't done it. Maybe a couple, by luck, they had kept, but most of them they hadn't. And the people started weeping because they want, they wanted to please the Lord. They wanted to do what God wanted them to do. And they were heartbroken that they had not been doing it. A broken And a contrite heart, O Lord, you will not despise. And to the brokenhearted people, Ezra said, Do not cry, because now you know. Now you can celebrate. Now you should barbecue that calf that you've been fattening up. Now you can drink from the sweet wine, the dessert wine, not the mm, wine, the really good wine. You should celebrate, and you should take whatever is left of this feast to those who weren't here today, those who couldn't make it, and share with them not only the leftovers of the feast, but the reason for it. We are celebrating because we did not know what God wanted from us, but now we do know. Now we have the opportunity to live that out. Tears of grief became tears of joy. In today's gospel, Jesus goes to the synagogue and he gets handed a scroll. 
another one of the scrolls from the scriptures. This is about 550 years after Nehemiah and Ezra's time. And now, many of the synagogues throughout Israel have scrolls, including in Jesus' hometown, Nazareth. And the attendant gives Jesus the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the great prophets to the people when they were in exile. It's from that time period. And Jesus reads the scripture. The Lord has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord has come upon me to bring good news, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. And after he sat down, Jesus said to all of those gathered in the synagogue, as his way of interpreting the scripture, today this has been fulfilled in your presence. So Jesus is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, not upon Isaiah, who is bringing good news to a group of exiles. Jesus is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to those who need it. If you are captive, oh, you need good news. If you are poor, you need good news. If you are disabled and unable to work, you need good news. Jesus says, I am here for that. Jesus is kind of like a triage nurse who goes out and checks the ones who are most in need of help. Oh, this one's got a pulse. That's okay. This one's got a bleeding artery. Oh, I'm going to take care of this one first. Jesus comes to those most in need first. But Jesus checks everyone out. Haven't we experienced that from Jesus? Jesus checks everyone out because not all wounds are obvious. Not all wounds are apparent even to a skilled nurse or physician. We are all wounded in one way or another. And as Jesus found out in his years, he found out that we are all wounded by sin, by regrets, by shame, for ways we have not lived out the two greatest laws, to love God with our whole being, to love our neighbor as ourself. So Jesus brings his healing, his good news to all of us who are wounded. And Jesus is enough for all the wounds, for all the wounds of the whole world. For Jesus is not alone. Jesus brings the Spirit of God. And Jesus gets poured out also in us. We are the body of Christ. You've heard that expression, right? We are the body of Christ. And it is in us that God's grace is made known to the world. It is in us that the wounded are healed. We are the ones who give the water in baptism. 
We are the ones who offer the taste of Holy Communion, God's grace and forgive, forgiveness taken into us. We are the ones who go out from this hillside in Huntington Valley to take God's grace to the world. Whenever we do or say a kind thing or a forgiving thing or a true thing, we allow good news to be heard when we go out as God's word. God gives us good news, and we take it to others. You will not despise a broken and contrite heart, O oh God. We have that. And Jesus heals it. And for others who have broken and contrite hearts, we take ourselves to provide that healing that we have experienced from Jesus. Amen. In our worship now, we will have our time for prayers. A reminder that this worship service is being live streamed, so uh, those of you who are here in the sanctuary uh, you may not want to use people's full names or their entire situation, but uh, please do uh, share at this time your concerns and your joys. Well, I'm going to start out with Pastor Karen, who, um, hi there, who uh, is home. She's uh, live streaming today. Uh, Pastor Karen is recovering from uh, knee replacement surgery. She's been out walking. She has been, um, from what she's posted on Facebook, she has been following doctor's orders. Um, and uh, we hope to see you up here next week. So, um, but do keep her in your prayers because recovering from that surgery is a long road. It's slow. Other, other concerns? Okay. Member who's having uh, major surgery on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. mm. That volunteers uh, to Sudan will come back safely. Mm. Dolores fell last night, so we hold her in prayer. For first responders and soldiers, but especially for um, LAPD uh, officer Andy Chan, still recovering from uh, the motorcycle accident. Philadelphia, what did I say? I said Los Angeles? Wow, it's been a long time since I've lived in Los Angeles. Well, okay. All of those uh, in grief and mourning. We've had a lot of funerals here at Gloria Day and, um, and not just here. But, yeah. for the federal workers and for our federal government to work together for everyone's good. All right, let us uh, gather in prayer. Loving God, gracious friend, we give you thanks for your many gifts of this day, for the opportunity to worship you, for the opportunity to 
raise a joyful noise. Gracious God, we are bold to pray this day that you will make your power known in bringing healing to all those who are hurt, to those who are hurting in body, those whom we have named before you, and those in our hearts, as well as those we don't know. We pray for those who are hurting in spirit, for those who are troubled. We pray for those who are desperate, that they may find a way out, that they may come to know blessings from you, perhaps blessings through us. Help us to be generous in how we deal with each other, with our money, but with our time and with our, even with our thoughts of others. Help us to be generous. Gracious God, we know that there are people who put their lives at risk to save others. We give thanks for them. We give thanks for bravery that shows itself in whatever form. We ask that you continue to pour your spirit into us, into all who worship you, into all who are looking for a way. Give us your holy and life-giving spirit that we may have an abundance to share. For these things and for all we need, we pray in Jesus' name, the same Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our worship continues with our offerings as we give from among our financial gifts back to God for the ministry that goes on in this place and beyond. Oh 
few things to share for church news, and uh, the most important one is about what's happening uh, next Sunday, one service next Sunday. Uh, we will be live streaming it. It will be at 10. It'll be at 10 next Sunday, and Vinny has a few things to say about that. So that said, I hope you're all excited. Wow, that's hot. That's hot. Everybody gets to sleep in a little, so that's good. Um, and really, um, we're having that one service because we're having our event um, following that, which is um, basically going to be a history event. It's basically uh, an event geared towards getting to know one another. Um, it's, you know, not me getting to know you, you getting to know me. It's us getting to know each other. Some of you may already, you know, be very familiar with one another, um, but I have a suspicion that as many of you may know each other's faces, I don't think everybody knows everyone's story. And we're gonna, we're gonna get to the bottom of that. I'm gonna find it all out, that's right. <laughs> Hope you're ready. But no, uh, it's not gonna be any sort of, uh, you know, prearranged kind of thing. We're gonna guide it, but it's essentially a conversation. And uh, all I'm asking, standing here asking all of you, is that you make the time to attend. And you help us to create some sort of, um, profile, i.e. kind of a guidance um, as to what we need as a congregation. I don't know, and individually none of you actually know, but together we can come up with a pretty good idea of what we need uh, moving forward. And that's really, this event is the first one in a series of events that's geared towards doing that. And this one is, I would probably probably say the most uh, most important in my mind, only because it's the first one. Um, and the second one might be more important. I don't know. But either way, right now, this is the one to come to. So um, I hope that you can all join us there and that you'll all take the time to, uh, you know, help this make a community. Yes. Fantastic, yes. It's, um, you know, as being part of the transition team, um, it, it's, it's an honor for me to be a part of that. And I was really happy when uh, Pastor Donna asked me to join that. I wasn't really sure what my role was going to be, but here it is. So this is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm talking to all you guys, and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, I've maybe piqued your curiosity, um, you know, as far as what my story might be. If not, then I'm fine whatever. But uh, I'm really curious to know all of you. So that said, please come. <laughs> and you live streamers uh, who live close by, we hope you'll uh, show up for that. Uh, right after our 10 o'clock worship, we'll be in the Christian Fellowship Hall. Um, and uh, the transition team has put together uh, a good event. We're going to have you uh, home. We're Not home. We're going to have you Leaving here by 1.30, and we're going to feed you, thanks to the hospitality team. Um, so you'll have, uh, we're going to have soup. It will be a super lunch. Okay, yes. Super uh, lunch. That was my, why don't you give that line to me? Like, <laughs> oh, that's, a good one. that's 
Hey, I, I, save, I save good lines for myself. Um, so but we do hope to see uh, very, very many of you uh, there and, and uh, finding things out. Uh, the, um, that morning at 9 o'clock, I think it's also in the Christian Fellowship Hall, there will be uh, putting together the, uh, the, the care boxes uh, that get uh, taken to uh, the Gloria Day homebound folks. So uh, that's also happening next Sunday. For those of you who wind up coming early, you can help out with that. Are there other announcements for the good? Julie. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. To in, for those of you who didn't hear, um, Julie suggests inviting someone who used to sit near you in worship, saying, "Hey, I miss you. Please come to this. That would be great." Yes, yes. Sign up, sign up uh, so we know how much food we will, be, we will be needing. That will be great. Any other announcements for the good of Gloria Day? Uh, I wanted to throw out an open invitation to those in the congregation and those out in streaming land. Um, if you're interested in being part of the band, uh, or maybe you want to distance yourself from the band, I don't know. We'll listen back to the stream. Uh, but, uh, and after many, I don't know now, right? Um, but, uh, if, you, if anyone's interested in playing any instrument, you have play an instrument, you play you know, guitar, um, piano, whatever you sing, um, we can, what we'll do is we'll have a rehearsal and we'll see if it's a good fit. But we are, you know, we're always looking for more additions as people more come in and out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any more drummers? Oh, uh, yeah, no more drummers. So <laughs> <laughs> we have three. So, uh, but yeah, I just want to throw it out there. Um, so if anyone's interested, you can just come up to me uh, anytime and, and I can. Great. Thanks. All right. Please stand for our hymn, song.
God's grace is enough. May you go out this week and when you encounter people who are shedding tears of sorrow, may you help to turn them to tears of joy. Share your good news. Amen.